I ran into him over at Kirk's booth, and he was playing the dog out of uh, Cascade. And I spent my whole month listening to the record and writing it down so that we'd have some sheets to hand out. And I hadn't practiced it yet. And I thought, what a great combination. It's, uh, between the two of us, we can lick this <laughs> So uh, Eddie volunteered last night to be my lovely young assistant. <laughs> we practice, and then, uh, I don't know, did you sleep last night? A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> he got a lot better this morning. I don't know, it was amazing. I don't know all that. Um, what I want to do is walk us through the tab to Cascade, and along the way talk about some uh, right-hand fingering, because right-hand fingering is almost one of the biggest tricks in this piece. And also, I'm not going to kind of hit everything because it just goes on and on forever. You know, you guys have heard this piece or tried to play it for you, but no, it's got practically everything Chet ever played all in one piece. And uh, he had to even change keys in the middle to get it all in. It's an amazing tour of force. Uh, one of the first things that becomes tough is just the stretch that opens the piece. And uh, we talked about a couple of things this uh, already this morning. One is to kind of learn how to stretch. Have you all done this exercise? I think this one never, in the old days, I always did this as a Johnny Smith exercise. And what I'm doing is just making the little major seven shape and then creeping down one finger. And of course, the farther you go down, eventually you're going to, it's going to be very difficult. That's about the time you're getting ready, you know. And then there's another little stretcher here. Just make a G chord on the third fret, you know, a little half bar, and replace that pinky. Now move the chord down and hang on the pinky. And you can do that up higher first.
this point also, you encounter for the first time an issue that the thumb tends to accent. So if you're not really kind of thinking about the piece, you'll get this kind of three feel out of it, like. And that ain't it. You've got to think, boom, chick, boom, chick. got to be accented a little bit as a way to kind of get the syncopation right. And that distinction is really critical because listen to this. Not even the same, is it? And all the way through, you find a lot of Chet's moves are based on these three-finger patterns in some sequence where he's playing them, where the the three quality is not there. It's you're feeling. And one, two, and three take turns getting the the hit or one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, whatever. You want. So you just gotta practice making sure that you're not doing uh, a classic guitar player's three, you know. That's kind of nice for some people. Um, we ought to just see if I, oh, I think there's another thing here with this. Let's see. So here's what you're doing. Here's what that looks like now, the first part. And then the chest kind of brushing with his index finger. plays 
that single note on the fourth string. second string, third string, fourth string, all right, now you add the scale fingering in the left hand, and the scale is fingered so that there are three scale notes on each string. happened 
average and the scale goes down using that thumb middle index on one string pattern. And it goes back up using that kind of roll pattern. So if you're just looking at the right hand, it's this. may help you to get that square and then go back in and put the finger in. You know. But after you've done that, you can there's a there's a thing you can do here which is if I play that thing from A but if I played it from uh, G and then played it with uh, a dub, see how it sounds like a G scale now? I just started here with a C. C. Now it sounds like a C scale. The same pattern, just starting in different places. He's starting at, on an A because he's kind of on like an A sound, man. like an A minor kind of a sound. So the notes of the scale are the same whether you are thinking A minor, G7, or C, but it just depends on where you start. So a lot of times you say, how do you do that scale in different keys? start in a different place. Now when you start in a different place, the first time you try it, you've got to back up and think, okay, now what finger do I start on in order to end up with my rolling pattern? So if I start on A, i got to go index rolling pattern. If I start on G, i got to go thumb index rolling pattern. If I start on C, i got to start thumb. So you have to kind of think about those kind of things to use this in some other. Uh, I have another tune where this lick is. Do you know what other one? That's great.